I'm Dr. John Iskander, and welcome to CDC Beyond the Data. I'm here today with Drs. Don Smith and Melanie Thompson to talk about HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, Dr. Thompson, um, we heard today at Grand Rounds about uh, what is now being called uh, PrEP, which is an option for prevention of HIV. Could you, in a nutshell, tell us what HIV PrEP is? Uh, yes. Pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, is a new prevention tool in which people who do not have HIV take anti-HIV drugs, antiretroviral drugs, in order to help prevent the transmission of HIV. Now, I know you have also been involved uh, as an investigator in um, some of the clinical uh, trials of uh, HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis. What have we learned from those trials about the safety and efficacy of PrEP? Well, we have a growing safety database on tenofovir FTC, or Truvada, which is the only drug approved by the US FDA for PrEP at this time. We have a lot of data on safety in the treatment arena because people with HIV take this drug for treatment. But in the clinical trials for pre-exposure prophylaxis, what we have seen is that the drug is very well tolerated, there have been minor safety issues, and that also it is very effective if it is taken in a daily uh, manner as directed. So efficacy and the ability to prevent HIV infection depends very heavily on adherence to drug. All right, thank you. Um, Dr. Smith, uh, very recently within the, the, the past week, the U.S. Public Health Service uh, published uh, guidelines for the use of uh, PrEP as part of HIV prevention. Can you summarize the, the key messages from that guideline for us, please? Absolutely. The key, the key messages from the guidelines are similar to what Dr. Uh, Thompson just said, that a daily dose of Truvada is indicated for PrEP um, in populations that have substantial risk for acquiring HIV infection. And that includes um, gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, heterosexual men and women, and injection drug users um, when they are likely to be exposed to HIV uh, on an ongoing basis. So those are obviously uh, very Im important guidelines. I know they've, they've received a lot of attention. Uh, what have we learned so far and, and what might be learned in the future about use of PrEP in the real world beyond clinical trials? One of the reasons we issued these guidelines for clinical practitioners is that although the trials have gotten a lot of information out, uh, many practitioners who see people at high risk are not really yet aware of PrEP, and if they are aware of it, they're not necessarily sure what the steps are in deciding who's the right candidate for it and how to, how to provide it to patients. And so um, we issued the guidelines really to help with that process. Now, over time, we're going to have to look and see how that actually works, how people are using it, what the outcomes are, what's the long-term safety of the drug, um, are people able to take it every day, which is what's necessary to get high efficacy. All right. So in addition to the guidelines, are there other um, resources or materials that are available for providers to help them learn about and, and, and use PrEP as an HIV prevention tool? Sure. The guideline itself has a supplement that goes with it that has uh, some additional tools that providers might find useful. So it has handouts for patients, for example, in English and Spanish. Um, it has information sheets for providers about specific uh, issues involved in prescribing PrEP to some populations. It has additional information about how to talk to patients about medication adherence and about reducing their risk behavior. Um, so we're hoping that some of those tools will also be useful to providers. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Smith and Dr. Thompson. Thank you for joining us for CDC Beyond the Data. Please join us again next month.